check this out. In December, beginning of December, I was on YouTube and I was looking around and I saw my horoscope Libra thing on there. So I clicked it and I watched it and and the guy said, something's gonna happen on the 10th, huge on the 10th, gigantic. It's gonna, you're never gonna be the same. It's gonna really shake your world. It's good, it's a positive thing, but it's, you know, it's, it's enormous, uh, or whatever it is, you know, I'm like, okay. And things have been weird with me lately, but I figure that's always the case with me. And um, so I, I remembered it. And then on the 9th, right, uh, I started, feeling pretty little odd day be faith but on the ninth I woke up on the ninth and I remember it was as if I never felt such loss like a, a death within myself kind of and I felt for these sad feelings for these people who I have not thought I had no feelings for anymore like all these people from my past all these different relationships and stuff and it was like a severed it brought me like almost to tears and I was like you know, in the morning, I was like, I, I, I can't believe this. Like, I, everything's going on. And I remember some, it was a rare time someone called me, a girl, she called me, and I was, me, I'm on, you won't believe what's going on. And um, but I was like, witness, you know. And that was the night. So uh, it was uh, just a crazy day and a loss and feeling and anxiety and just horrible anguish like I can't believe inner and just uh, and somehow I got through the night but then on the 10th I woke up and I swear I I, I had that feeling was starting to come again like same build up as the day before but by the time I got up and then I remember and here's where it gets I, strange for me. Especially. I walk over to a corner of my room and I pick up this book that I've had in my possession for at least 15 years, maybe 20 years. Never read it once. It came close to being gone so many times. I had put this for eBay, a bunch of other books and stuff. It's never, you know, it, it's, I just was guided to it. I picked it up. I do what I usually do with books, my powers, my heart. Talk to me, talk to me like that. And I open up to something that nearly split me in half. And I've been ever since. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll read it. And then it was another one. Yeah, there, so I just, it was out of the depths. Uh, and I just, it's just so bizarre how this book has been with me. Uh, and um, it maybe it was, it was Moon of Fear Mind too. Alright, 51. Here we go. The Moon of Clear Mind. One Sunday evening, after a Dharma talk at the Providence Zen Center, a student asked, Swing Son Swan Sa, how can I get beyond just verbalizing the question? What am I? Swin Sa, this was the second one I read the, of the second night. Swin Sa said, You want this question to grow? This mind is no good. This is attachment thinking. You must cut off this thinking and only do hard training. It is not important for the question to grow. What is important is one moment of clear mind. Clear mind is before thinking. If you experience this mind, you have already attained enlightenment. I have experienced it. If you experience this for a short time, even for one moment, this is enlightenment. All the rest of the time you may be thinking, but you shouldn't worry about this thinking. It is just your karma. You must not be attached to this thinking. You, you must not force it to stop or force clear mind to grow. It will grow by itself as your karma gradually disappears. Clear mind is like the full moon in the sky.
Sometimes clouds come and cover it, but the moon is always behind them. Clouds go away, then the moon shines brightly. So don't worry about clear mind. It is always there. When thinking comes, behind it is clear mind. When thinking goes, there is only clear mind. Thinking comes and goes, comes and goes. You must not be attached to the coming or the going. Good stuff, right? Okay, here's yet another one of my treasured, treasured items in this world. A copy of the Tao Te Ching. Again, like a story. I've had this book since my first year of training, like a white belt. So, 91, what's that? 29 years. <laughs> I'm still in good condition. And some people say the, uh, the wisest book on earth ever written in the, next to the Bible. The Tao Te Ching. All right, I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Because I think y'all should know it. If you're not familiar with it, you should check this stuff out. It's really good. Or Zen stuff. All right. Here is number 36. That which shrinks must first expand. That which fails must first be strong. That which is cast down must first be raised. Before receiving, there must be giving. This is called perception of the nature of things. Soft and weak, overcome, hard and strong. Fish cannot le leave deep waters, and a country's weapons should not be displayed. Fame or self, which matters more? Self or wealth, which is more precious? Gain or loss, which is more painful? He who is attached to things will suffer much. He who saves will suffer heavy loss. A contented man is never disappointed. He knows when to stop and does not find himself in trouble. He will stay forever safe. Number 45. Oh, I gave this one a star. Great accomplishments seem imperfect, yet it does not outlive its usefulness. Great fullness seems empty, yet it cannot be exhausted. Great straightness seems twisted. Great intelligence seems stupid. Great eloquence seems awkward. Movement overcomes cold. Stillness overcomes heat. Stillness and tranquility set things in order in the universe. Stuff, right? When the Tao is present in the universe, the horse is called manure. When the Tao is absent from the universe, war horses are bred outside the city. There is no greater sin than desire, no greater curse than discontent, no greater misfortune than wanting something for oneself. Therefore, he who knows that enough is enough will always have enough. Okay, one more. Another one of my double highlight. Three. No, it's orange, pink, and yellow. 56. Those who know do not talk. Those who talk do not know. Keep your mouth closed. Guard your senses. Temper your sharpness. Simplify your problems. Mask your brightness. Be at one with the dust of the earth. This is primal union. He who, who has achieved this state is unconcerned with friends and enemies, with good and harm, with honor and disgrace, 
This, therefore, is the highest state of man. I, I do believe agree. What a great book, you know. Um, it was written um, BC. Again, I, I, I remember getting this at, uh, gosh, it was. Okay, flea market? I don't know how I remember getting the coming in contact. I didn't know what the hell it was. I didn't tell you that. What is at issue is nothing less than the activation of an entirely new power within us, an entirely new movement of consciousness. The point is that man is built to receive, contain, and transform this power, and then to make his life a complete expression of it. Wuss.
I felt really shitty yesterday. Fucking almost bona fide sick. I think maybe that's why I'm dragging ass so much this day. I'm not feeling better yet. There's nothing, nothing that gets my ass more than fucking being sick. I hate being sick. I can't stand it. It shuts me down. And then, and then that's when I feel the loneliness. But you know, I say these things, and I, I got like a couple of women who uh, mess- sent me messages on the uh, dating thing. They can't even look at them. I look at them. I look at them like days later, and then when they moved on or something, I'm, you know, maybe I, I should do that. Sure, the night time would be all good. So.
gonna have I have cool ideas and stuff too for my own getting when I get back to this, that book and words and all that. But you know, keep pushing out, keep putting things out, keep expressing, uh, and trying to document uh, this phenomenon. 